Uh, so, uh, so we move on. So is the, the second talk of this morning. So it's my pleasure then to, we to welcome uh, Miguel Angel Martinez. So he is a full professor at the University of, uh, of Saragossa. And uh, he has a very long uh, track record in uh, modeling of, uh, of soft tissues, including uh, multi-physics composition effects and uh, mechanobiological, uh, mechanobiological events. And so uh, now he will uh, explain us so the transfer of this knowledge so in the problem of uh, atherosclerosis and uh, so using uh, modeling in order to identify the most important features um, that, that, that contribute to the development of this disease. So thank you, Miguel Angel. Thank you, Jerome, for this nice introduction. Well, the, the title of this talk is, uh, you can see in the slides, is uh, Mechanobiology of and Mathematical Modeling of Atheron Plaque Initiation and Development. Logically, it's a word that has been developed by different people, and some parts of this talk correspond to uh, some uh, pieces of doctoral thesis, and I will present the people that has participated in this work at the end of the talk. So this is the outline I'm going to follow in the presentation. I will begin with a brief motivation about atherosclerosis. I will continue with the presentation of the modeling of atherone plaque formation and development. Also the task and objectives of this world uh, I'm presenting here, the governing equation and some numerical example and some numerical results of these models. And I will finish the first part of the talk with some conclusions about this uh, modeling of atherone plaque initiation and progression. And the second part of the talk, uh, I will present some possible further lines of research. Well, it is clear that atherosclerosis is one of the most fatal cardiovascular diseases. It has, uh, atherosclerosis is a disease with a high prevalence in the population in the developed world, and it can be considered as a chronic disease with a relative slow progression. But under some circumstances, what happens is uh, can be presented acute events which can, be, uh, can have dramatic consequences. As the picture shows, atherosclerosis is the process in which plagues consisting of deposits of cholesterol and other lipids, macrophages, and calcium are built up in their arterial walls. And there are some uh, primary uh, effects that are basically the narrowing of the arteries, uh, that is known, usually known as stenosis, the hardening of the arteries, the loss of elasticity, and the reduction of blood flow. However, the fatal event occurs when the plaque ruptures and releasing its contents and causing uh, the formation of blood clots, which travel around the cardiovascular system and can produce, for example, in the coronary arteries, can produce the heart attack or, in the, um, or also strokes or ischemia, for example, in the uh, arteries of the legs. Well, nowadays there are important clinical problems relating with the detection of the vulnerability of atherone plague. Clinical staff has some dif uh, difficulties in the diagnosis and of this vulnerability of atherone plague because the, the available screening and diagnostic methods currently are insufficient to predict the event before it occurs. A second point very important from the clinical perspective is the initiation and progression of the atherone plaque and the causes that provoke this progression. So many efforts are being applied, and, but they are mainly focused on biomedical, biological, or genetic point of view. However, as uh, we will see during this presentation, there are also important mechanical factors that have a direct influence in the progression on the atherone plague. Therefore, I, I consider that a multidisciplinary approach is necessary and the, the mixed uh, research groups are necessary in order to bridge the gap between the medical and the engineering perspective of this problem. Well, 
as I said before, there are different time scale in the progression of atherosclerosis. It should be considered as a cascade of different events that finally can provoke the uh, plaque rupture. So the atheros uh, atherosclerosis or atherogenesis uh, is a very complex problem with a lot of cellular and molecular processes, including, for example, many growing factors, protein, uh, signaling germs. So we are, we are going to focus on the mechanical perspective of the progression of the atheron plaque, and which are the main uh, mechanical factors that provokes this progression. Uh, observing the different processes of the atheron progression, there are two great families. The family of uh, lipid accumulation, the processes related with lipid accumulation, that is a slow processes that um, appears during decades and are related with the increased fibrous stress. And the other family are the inflammation, uh, inflammation or inflammatory processes that are produced during years and are related with the a increase in the extracellular matrix degradation and also with the decrease of the matrix system, uh, synthesis. So the combination of these different processes can finally provoke the uh, plaque rupture. So one of the problem is the uh, weakening uh, the, of the uh, fibrous uh, cap of the atheron plaque. So if we observe this figure, this figure here, we can observe two different parts. This part here, that is lipid accumulation, that is in the inner part of the artery, and this part here, that is known as fibrous cap, that is composed mainly of extracellular matrix. What happens is the, if the extracellular matrix um, weaken or lose its mechanical properties, what happens is that the probability of rupture increases. So it is well known that there are many um, factors that contribute to the plaque progression. Observing, for example, the bio uh, biological factor, it is clear that there exist genetic factor, the LDL, low density lipoprotein concentration in the blood flow, uh, diabetes or endothelial dysfunction. Another factors are environmental factors, for example, the smoke and diet. But as I said before, we are going to focus on the biomechanical factors. It is clear that uh, the mechanical factors seriously affect the progression of the atheron plague. Uh, why? Because uh, if we observe experimental evidences, we can observe that atherosclerotic plagues are located at predilection sites such as side branches, curved segment, or bifurcation, which are known to distort several properties in the blood velocity flow. So the mechanical effect of the blood flow uh, affects seriously the progression of the plaque. So several lines of research indicate that biomedical factors play an essential role in the progression of plaques, for example, in the plaque size, and also in the plaque composition, in the composition of the different parts of the atheron plaque. Another important factor from a geometrical point of view are, for example, the bell cell the curvature, also the bell cell compliance, pulsatile blood flow, or the heart motion. Well, between the, all the biomechanical factors, there are one that is generally accepted that has an important effect in the uh, initiation and progression of atheron plate. That is the friction that the blood flow uh, is applied over the endothelium of the artery layer, of the arterial layer. So this uh, friction force is known as wall shear stress and seriously affect the permeability of the endothelium. It is proof, experimental proof, that for very low wall shear stress, the permeability of the endothelium is increased. So there are some substances that are in the blood flow, for example, the LDL, that pass through the endothelium towards the internal layers of the artery and appears at the position of lipid contents in the arterial part of the artery. So um, another important factor is the oscillatory shear effect of the blood flow over the endothelium. If the wall shear stress change, 
change his direction or its direction or change the sign of this wall shear stress, what is now the oscillatory shear index. So for high oscillatory shear index, the permeability of the endothelium is increased again. So these two factors, wall shear stress and the oscillatory effect of this uh, wall shear stress seriously affect the progression of the, of the disease, of the atheron plex. So there are special sites in which the flow is perturbed. So uh, there are some points in which the wall shear stress decreases and the oscillatory shear stress increases. So these are, are known as atheroprom sites. Well, concerning the vulnerability of the plaque. Uh, well, there are important factors that affect this vulnerability of the plaque. So, um, the clinical staff what um, observe, what examine for consider if a plaque is vulnerable or not in mainly three parameters that are the size of the lipid core we can observe here, the thickness of the fibrous cap, this is a, a extracellular matrix, so this thickness, and also the degree of stenosis of the artery. Based on these three characteristics, they uh, apply different techniques, for example, stenting or balloon or, or applying a, a bypass surgery. So what happened is that there are many other parameters that can also affect the vulnerability of the atheron plague. For example, if we observe the geometrical parameters, there are other parameters, for example, not only this thickness, but also the length and the width of the plaque are, for example, the stenosis ratio or the angle of this one. So another important parameter from a mechanical point of view is the residual stress that uh, are inherent in the artery. More parameters were, um, we made a, a computational study some years ago observing or trying to analyze the influence of the microcalcification. Microcalcification, a small deposit of calcium that appears in the atheron plate. And there is a controversy between different authors. Some authors say that uh, this microcalcification provoke an increase in the vulnerability risk of the plaque. So, Another author say that, okay, this microcalcification has a very little or, or almost null effect on the vulnerability. What we obtained in this study was, was that it depends on two main parameters. That was the stiffness of the microcalcification. So if we have very stiff microcalcification, the risk is increased. And also the location of the microcalcification. If this microcalcification is located in the shoulder of the atheron plague, the increase, the, the risk is also increased. So it depends on these two main factors. And another mechanical uh, parameter that should be taken into account in order to, to examine to exam the microcalcification, the, uh, sorry, to examine the vulnerability of the of the plaque was the positive or remodeling of the atheron plague. This figure here show a positive remodeling, is a growth of the plaque uh, outwards and negative uh, correspond to an inwards growth. Well, we compare both models of remodeling, conserving all the geometry, all the uh, material parameters, all the variables, except the positive or negative remodeling. And in all, all the cases we analyze, we observe that the vulnerability is increased for the case of positive remodeling. And this is an important case because this positive remodeling corresponds to the initial stages of atherosclerosis and usually is asymptomatic. Well, let's return to the model of initiation of atheron plague. So from my point of view, there are two great families for these models that are the continuum models are the agent-based models. I'm going to present some, some features of the different models. The continuum-based, uh, continuum models are based on reaction, convection, diffusion equation. They consider the wall as a continuum. 
is easy to model the transport phenomena of the different substances through the arterial wall. And also, it is easy to couple with mechanics. These are the main advantages or features of this continuum model. But there are some important disadvantages that are, they are phenomenological models, pure phenomenological models. They are deterministic. They're, they're are, mm, there is no statistical data in these models. And uh, it's difficult to validate with experimental data. And finally, they present some numerical reports, for example, uh, numerical problems, for example, concerning the convection of the equation of the modeling of the volumetric uh, growth. Mm, we are using finite ele element mesh. And in the case of distortion of this finite element mesh, we have numerical problems. On the contrary, the agent-based model are based on statistical roles. Consider the wall as a lattice, as, as a discrete lattice. So in each point of the space, we, have a, we can have a cell or a substance. So the different cells or substance interact each other. So they are based on cell population behavior. Uh, we can obtain probabilistic solution. And usually, they do not present uh, uh, numerical problems. Uh, the main drawbacks of this family of methods are that they are difficult to couple with mechanics. Uh, it's more difficult to model the transport phenomena. And finally, again, they are difficult to validate with experimental data. This is a problem common to the two family of methods. Well, let's go with the first approach. And the, the model I am going to present here corresponds to the first approach. So the, the main objective of this uh, presentation or of this work is to, to present a numerical model based on reaction convection diffusion equation that includes the main processes for example, the blood flow dynamics and also the mass transfer of the different cells and substances in, in the inner part of the arterial wall in order to, to better, two main objectives, that is to better understand the atherosclerosis growth process and a final and a far objective that is try to guide the future therapeutic strategies. So, I'm going to present here the basics of this model. After reading many literature on this topic um, and several meetings with biologists, phys uh, physiologists, and identi identify several species, we focus on the species I'm presented in this slide. We have five different types of cells. We have monocytes, macrophages. We have also foam cells and contractile and synthetic small muscle cells five types of cells, and four concentrations of different substances that are LDL, oxidized LDL, cytokines, and collagen. So the, prof, uh, the process initiates, I put the video here. OK. Let's go. OK, it goes down. The process initiates when the uh, permeability of the endothelium is modified. So several substances or cells that, uh, that are in the lumen, basically the monocyte and LDL, pass through the endothelium. When uh, they pass, the monocytes uh, change to uh, macrophages. Macrophages try to eat the uh, LDL. So finally, they die and form the big cell that is known as foam cells. Uh, the macrophages segregate different substances, mainly the cytokines. The cytokines is a signaling substance that provokes the change of the phenotype of contracted and most muscle cells that are in the outer part of the media. So they change the phenotype. They convert into synthetic small muscle cells. They proliferate to the inner part of the artery. And finally, uh, synthetic uh, small muscle cells surrogate collagen. So in this part here, there is a concentration on three different substance, substances that are foam cell, lipid content on the plague, the synthetic small muscle cell, and also different extracellular matrix that we are representing here with the collagen. So there are different parts here, and we 
half of sir before that the 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 black half separated parts well one of the problem we will see after of this model that we are not able to separate the different parts of the plaque we have a continuum concentration of the different substances we have a continuum uh, proportion of foam cell small muscle cell or collagen but no differentiation into the different part of the plaque i will say about the equations the converting equation, oh, it is clear we have a fluid dynamic. It is necessary to, to model the fluid dynamics of the problem. In this case, we are going to consider a steady, incompressible, laminar, and Newtonian uh, blood flow. It's very simple uh, from the fluid uh, approximation. We use a standard Navier Stoke and continuity equation. And after that, it is necessary to model the path of the different substances from the blood flow towards the inner, uh, the, the arterial walls. So what happened is that the endothelium changed the permeability. This permeability depends on mainly three different junctions. It is known as three-pore uh, three model. And this model, the permeability of especially the leaky junction, the three poles are leaky junction, normal junction, and vesicular pathway. Well, this junction here, uh, the, this junction is very dependent on the wall shear stress level. So if the wall shear stress decrease or increase the oscillatory wall shear stress, what happened that this permeability increase. So if this permeability increase, the total transmolar volume flux increase. So there is increase in the, of the flow of, from the blood flow towards the, the, the arterial layer, to the intima or to the media. So an important part is also the Darcy's law. The Darcy's law, what give us is that the, give us the velocity of the plasma through the arterial layer. So the Darcy's law give the velocity, and this velocity is proportional, is linearly proportional to the pressure drop. The pressure drop between the interior part of the vessel in the lumen and the exterior part that is the uh, adventitia. Okay, the equations about solute dynamics. Well, we are going to consider two parts. The first part is as, or the first step is a steady, is a stationary step in which we are trying to uh, um, achieve the permanent condition of the blood flow. So it is a standard navier stoke equation, and in the navier stoke equation, we incorporate this equation with a diffusion and a convection term for two main substances that are in the blood flow, that are LDL and monocyte. And we are going to consider two different concentration of LDL. We will consider the a normal concentration and a very high concentration to observe the differences of this parameter of the model. And the second part of the model, the second step, is a transient uh, part, is a time-dependent diffusion and convection equation along the arterial wall. So, for example, for the case of LDL and monocyte, what happened is that this two, this substance and this cell pass through the endothelium, and the pass depend on the transmural flow I presented in the previous slide. And this transmural flow depends highly on the wall shear stress. So this uh, flow uh, of LDL and monocyte depend directly of this variable. The equation of the different uh, substances for, for this case here, I'm presenting the equation for LDL, oxidized LDL, cytokines, and collagen. Well, the, the structure of the equation are very similar for all of them. We have a variation of the concentration, a variation with time. We have a diffusion term in, in blue. We have a convection term due to the velocity of the plasma, of the transmural plasma. Uh, we have two reaction term. We can have production or we, have, we can have degradation. For example, for the case of LDL, we consider, the, we consider this uh, temporal variation. We have diffusion, the convection, and in this case here, we have no production. We have only degradation. Why? Because 
the LDL is degraded to oxidized LDL. So this term is the same that this term. Here we have a, a minus signal. Uh, we have here a positive contribution. So these are source term. Uh, these are sink term. Well, similar for the rest of the equation, for the equation for the different cell population. We have different parts, diffusion, convection, differentiation of the different cells, and we can have death or chemotaxis term. So the, the, there are similar equations for all the terms here. What about the parameters of these equations? Well, we have a total of 34 model parameters, and there are different set of parameters. For example, some, there are some related with the blood diffusion. We have plasma diffusion coefficient. These parameters are very important. For example, the diffusion of the different substances through the arterial wall. Also, different rates that affect the reaction terms, how these reaction terms vary or with time. Some geometrical parameters, some threshold affecting the reaction terms. For example, the, the concentration of LDL has a upper threshold, and some other parameters related, for example, with material parameters or material features, for example, blood density, plasma density, uh, collagen density, or intima porosity. So one of the problems of this model is um, how we extract the different parameters. Well, in this case, you can observe each parameter has its reference. What happened is that um, each parameter is obtained in different conditions. There are some parameters that have been gotten by um, in vitro studies, some other in vivo studies, ex vivo studies. From the in vivo study, there are some parameters from the human data or from experimental some um, animals data, for example, mice or rabbit. So it is very difficult, it's almost impossible to get the parameters from the same source. So finally, this model, one of the problems or limitation of this model is the final validation because the, the, the parameters of the model um, are, has very different uh, characteristics. Well, about the uh, volume growth of the model. Well, it is necessary to consider an open system. Um, from the biological point of view, it's an open system because we have an incorporation of external energy. So this external energy which provoke is the growth of the biological system or the volume of the biological system. So it is possible to consider this volumetric growth observing the modification of the densities on the concentration, and we can establish this growth with a, um, a, st a string gradient tensor. So observing this tensor, we can pass to a velocity of the material points of the finite element mesh, and this material points is dependent on each integration point and mm, is modified in each time integration of the process. So in this case, we are going to consider that the volume changes mainly due to three different contributions. The contribution of the foam cell that we will consider as a spherical, the small muscle cell, synthetic small muscle cell, we consider ellipsoid, and the collagen concentration. So uh, we took uh, data from literature and they are the contribution to the volume growth. I present here the finite element mesh you can observe that we conserve an axi a symmetrical uh, an axis of axis symmetry. So we can model as a two-dimensional uh, two problem. Um, we have the inlet in the left part of the model, and uh, we have the, the outlet in the right part. This part here is an artificial stenosis. The, the objective of this stenosis is to provoke an artificial change in the wall shear stress fill. So what we will observe a very low wall shear stress is caused in this part here. So you can observe the mesh. It's important to have a very fine mesh in order to uh, compute very accurately the wall shear stress and also to compute the flux between the blood flow and the arterial, arterial wall. 
So we are going to consider three different scenarios. The first scenario is 10 years of high cholesterol. The second one, 10 years of normal cholesterol level. And the third scenario is a combination of both, five years of height and five years of normal cholesterol level. So some results. Uh, observing the hemodynamical parameters of the model, the hemodynamical results, you can observe here that the stenosis causes an acceleration of the flow that is typical and a recirculation area. This recirculation zone, what at the end of this recirculation zone, what, which provoke is an increase, uh, is, sorry, a decrease of the wall shear stress level. Observing the pressure, we observe a pressure drop just in the stenosis of the model. And what is more important is the wall shear stress. We, in, in this case, we have a stationary case, but we have a modification of the uh, wall shear stress level. The, the normal wall shear stress level is about 1, 1.2 Pascal, in this case here. One which is provoked here is just in the stenosis area, uh, acute increase of the wall shear stress, more than 10 Pascal appears, and about 10 centimeters downstream this stenosis, a acute decrease of the wall shear stenosis appears, and almost zero. So this area here, or this area here, is an atheroprone area. It is usually an area in which the atherome plex progresses. Well, observing the different concentration at the end, of the time model, that is 10 years, for the third case. This case corresponds to five years high cholesterol and five years low cholesterol level. So we can observe the, the concentration for two different zones in the critical area. The first zone in red is very close to the endothelium, and the second in blue is in the inner part of the, of the arterial wall. We can observe several conclusion, or we can obtain several conclusions. For example, the LDL in this point, it is observed that this uh, important, uh, uh, appears an important drop due to the change in the cholesterol level. So the cholesterol level in the blood flow passed directly to the cholesterol level, or the LDL concentration level in the artery. We can observe also that in the oxidized LDL, we have this uh, drop also, also for five years. And the, we have an important initial increase in the oxidized LDL, and after that, tend to a stationary state. Also, the monocyte, and what is important is also, for example, the, the concentration of a small muscle cell. What happened here is that the contracting small muscle cell, that is the usual state of the cells is modified. So they change the phenotype and appear synthetic as both muscle cells. So the contractile phenotype decreases and the uh, synthetic phenotype increases towards a maximum in this part here. Observing, for example, the concentration in the, uh, in the model of the different substances and cells in the model. We can observe two, two different Trends. For example, uh, observing LDL and monocyte, we can observe that LDL and monocyte are concentrated in the inner part of the arterial wall, in the part that we have uh, interface with the endothelium. What happened is that LDL is immediately, immediately, immediately uh, oxidized, so changed to this. Uh, sorry, I have to this one. So it's oxidized, and the oxidized uh, LDL appears in all the thickness of the artery, similar to the monocyte. And we can observe different diffusion of the distinct parameters or, or concentration, for example, for the small muscle cell or, for example, for the cytokines. The shape, the final shape of the artery will depend mainly on two effects, on the convection or, or on the diffusion of the different terms. If we have a higher convection, we have a distribution in the radial direction. If the diffusion terms are predominant, we have a dispersion in the longitudinal direction of the artery. I present here a qualitative um, modeling of the growing. Uh, I said before that it's very difficult to, uh, to establish an experimental validation, but the levels of the growth are similar to the, uh, to the levels we can get in the literature. 
we can observe the different growth for the three, three scenarios. And it is important also to observe that even for normal cholesterol level, the changes in the world CR stress causes the apparition of a small atheron plate. Um, one of the possibilities of this kind of model is to establish or to, to analyze which is the importance of the different parameters that appear in the model. For example, what happened with the diffusion parameters? Well, we can analyze the, the influence of this diffusion parameter in the final results of the model. And these parameters are important because, for example, it depends on the microstructure of the tissue. So if you know how the arterial tissue is, is, uh, is structured. Uh, it appears some lamina of elastin that, uh, that is oriented in a circumferential direction. So the diffusion of the different substances in the artery is easier in the longitudinal direction than in the radial direction. Because in the radial direction, you have to pass through the different uh, lamellas uh, uh, you have to pass through the different elastin lamina. So it is important to observe the differences between the diffusion coefficients. The results I have presented before correspond to an isotropic diffusion model, the same diffusion parameter for the radial and longitudinal direction. So the parameter gamma is the radian between the longitudinal to the radial diffusion coefficient. Um, I, I think that it's more logical to establish, uh, to, to fix a gamma parameter higher than one, for example, this case here, three, because it established that the uh, facility of diffusion in the longitudinal direction is higher than in the radial direction. But we analyze different, uh, different possibilities for the gamma parameter, it's a parametric study, and these are the results for, for this variation. If we compare, for example, the uh, relative LDL concentration in the arterial wall, well, we can observe the different, the 11 different models with different parameters, and also comparison with, with experimental data. We can observe uh, that, okay, there is a good correlation between numerical and experimental results, and in this case, the influence of the diffusion is very low. The results are very similar. What happens with that? Well, we can observe here with the LDL. What happened is that the LDL traspass passed through the endothelium, but just after processing, changed into oxidized LDL. So the diffusion of the LDL is very small. So the, the LDL concentration is not affected by the diffusion coefficients. But this coefficient seriously affect to the rest of the substances and cells of the model. For example, to the foam cell, uh, mainly to the phone cell, but also to the vascular small cells uh, or to the collagen. It's important the effect of the phone cell, and uh, they highly depend on the diffusion. It's very, uh, uh, it's very dependent of, of this diffusion coefficient. And we can observe the differentiation between the longitudinal, high longitudinal diffusion, or in this case, more radial diffusion coefficient. Uh, another important effect is the arterial pressure. So it seriously affects to the transmural plasma flow through the endothelium and through the arterial layer. This is the Darcy's equation. So we observe this is the uh, plasma velocity and it depends on the pressure drop. Uh, usually the pressure in the external layer of the artery in the adventitia is more or less constant what changes is the pressure in the internal part of the artery, in the lumen. So if we change this internal pressure, what we are changing is the pressure drop, increasing the velocity of the plasma, and also affected to the convection terms. So if we increase the internal pressure, we have a more convection effect in the continuity equation of the different, uh, of the different concentrations. So, for example, for this case, we analyze three different possibilities, three different scenarios that are low diastolic arterial pressure, normal pressure, and hypertension uh, conditions. So we can observe here the influence. The, in green, we have the normal pressure that are the 
uh, base case we have present before. And for the case of the low pressure, what happened is we have a, the, the convection is uh, less important than the diffusion. We have a shape uh, of the atherotic, uh, um, atheroma plague more spread in the longitudinal direction. Uh, on the contrary, for the imper hypertension condition here, we have a predominant effect of the convection. So we have a shape of the atheroma plague much more acute as we can observe in this figure. So the diffusion coefficient and the internal pressure modify the influence of the two of the main aspects of the model, that is the diffusion and convection terms of the model. And similarly to the rest of the uh, substances and cells of the model. So as main conclusions of this, this first part of the talk uh, concerning the modeling of atheron plague using continuum approach, a continuum equation, we can say that, well, a qualitative growth model is able to simulate from a global uh, perspective the plague initiation and progression process. So this model should be considered as a preliminary step, uh, as a first step to the understanding of the mechanical effects on this pathology projection. So it's important also to, to remark the limitation of this model. Uh, there are a lot of limitations. One is that it is necessary to include other biological processes. For example, the mechanotaxis. The mechanotaxis, uh, we have only one term for mechanotaxis and it's, it's, it has a, a height important in the modeling of this disease. And also another limitation is that you can observe that we have a continuum distribution of the different cell population and, and substances. Um, uh, when in a real plaque we have different parts. So this model are not able, these kind of models are not able to separate the different parts of the layer. If we want to separate the different part of the of the of the atheron plague we have to use a agent based model or a combination of both approaches and another important limitation is the experimental validation that is very difficult and I, it's not easy to validate these results so another conclusion is the importance of the diffusion and convection coefficient and the importance of for, for depending on the arterial pressure and on the diffusion coefficients. So how can we improve this kind of model? Mm, focusing of a mechanical point of view, from a mechanical perspective, which aspect we can include in this model to, mm, to improve the characteristic of this model from a mechanical point of view. There are several factors. For example, I'm presenting here five different factors and I'll present after the influence of some of them. For example, the inclusion of mechanical stress. It's clear that the mechanical stress has also to affect the progression of atheron plague. For example, the coupling between the mechanical and hemodynamical effect. So the possibility of doing fluid stru structure interaction simulation. Or for example, also modeling the uh, endothelial remodeling. So how the wall shear stress is modifying the morphology on the endothelial cell. This is another possible future line of research. And well, finally, how can we apply these techniques or this model to the clinical practice? How can we translate these techniques as well? It should be necessary to apply this model to clinical image-based studies. So uh, studies coming from patient-specific geometry. And also one of the main problems of this model is a high computational cost. So another alternative is the use of some kind of machine learning techniques in order to apply this model to the clinical practice. So I'm going to, to very briefly present some of this point of continuation of this model. For example, the, the role of mechanical stresses in the, in the artery in order to, to better simulate the, the atherosclerosis progression. Well, this is a study we did some years ago in collaboration with a French uh, team led by Professor Jacques Wayon of the 
University de Joseph Fourier, ¿por qué noble? And the idea, the objective was to study the role of mechanical factors such as heart motion or the combination with internal pressure in the appearance of atheron plaque in patient-specific uh, coronary bifurcation. We took eight different patient-specific geometries of the coronary bifurcation. We have the left anterior descending coronary artery and also the circumflex. In this bifurcation here, we have to observe how the mechanical stress or mechanical stiffening can affect the, the appearance of atheron plaque. Well, in order to include the motion of the heart, we took from this, uh, we took patient specific data. We have three types of data. For example, the radial expansion of the hair. We have also the twist, the twist angle of the hair, and very important also the axial contraction of the hair. And this axial contraction is important. It's almost 14% in axial deformation, negative deformation. We took a, a hyperelastic and isotropic model and parameters taken from the literature. We did finite element mesh, standard finite element meshes with excedral elements. Uh, with the, it's a fiber tissue, it is necessary to include an estimation of the orientation of the fibers, mainly collagen fibers and small muscle cells. And also to apply the different parameters of the heart motion that are the axial contraction, radial expansion, and the twist angle. So we have different images in different parts of the cycle, so we are able to apply the different motion of the heart. And also combined with the internal pressure in the artery. We can observe here the axial contraction of the artery and the vertical displacement is important. It's a real motion without magnification. Well, real, it's a finite element motion without magnification. Well, the parameter we took as comparison parameter was the luminal wall stiffness that is defined as a ratio between the stress and stretch level in the different po points of the solid meshes. So we can observe here some um, qualitative comparison between the higher stiffness in the wall and different zones of appearance of atheron plague in CT images from each specific uh, uh, patient-specific geometry. So we can observe that there exists some correlation between high stiffness and appearance on, of plaques. We can observe here also for patient number two and patient number five, and there is a specific zones, a specific place with high uh, wall stiffness and some correlation with these points here. It's important to observe that this correlation appears when we take into account the combined effect of the internal pressure and the heart motion. If we observe only the internal pressure, we have great areas of high stiffness and there is no correlation with the experimental evidences. Well, we did a, a, a statistical study trying to correlate the stiffness with the, the higher stiffness with the appearance of, uh, of plaques. We observe here that for higher stiffness, we have a higher possibility of finding atheron plaques for the descending artery, for the circumflex, and for the combination of these arteries. And also, it can be established a relationship between two parameters that are the stiffness, the peak luminal stiffness, and the luminal stretch. So these points, red points, are the position on atheron places and the values of the stiffness and stretching. And we can observe that plaques appear always for higher stiffness, stiffness higher than 300 kilopascal, and for stretching higher than 30%. So there is a correlation between some mechanical factor and the appearance of plaque. So this correlation appears in the spatial distribution. So it is important in order to identify the height risk zone for the appearance of atherosclerotic, 
And the idea is to try to incorporate these evidences into the continuum model for the growth of Atheron plague. So a combination of hemodynamical factor plus uh, some kind of solid factor, for example, luminal wall stiffness, I consider it could better represent the mechanical stimulus that promotes the initiation and progression of plaques. How can we combine this both this effect. The, the first alternative, the first approach uh, would be using fluid structure interaction analysis. What happens if we do this analysis, combination between fluid and solid in the same analysis? Well, in this case here, well, th this is another study we did, and the, the objective was not to identify height risk zone for the appearance of plaque, but try to identify risk of vulnerability plagues, of, of vulnerable plague, uh, to study the vulnerability of different plagues. So we did a, a parametric uh, model with different geometrical parameters. In this case here, we have four different parameters. For example, the, the cap thickness, this parameter here, the stenosis ratio, the lipid core length in this direction, and the lipid core width in this direction, the size of the lipid core. We establish a base case, this case here, and we modify each parameter in an individual way. So we modify, for example, the fibrous cap thickness, we modify in different four variation. So at the end, we have one base case, and um, four uh, times four, we have 16 variation of the base case, a total of 16 models. Well, the boundary condition for the fluid solid interaction is, uh, I know it, sorry. Okay, the boundary condition, okay, is, it is well known that we have imposed some condition on the solid, in this case, restrict restricting the displacement in the, in the ends of the model, and also applying mixed velocity pressure boundary condition. Our simple condition, but we apply a cardiac wave both for the pressure and for the volume velocity. The pressure applied at the end of the model and the velocity applied at the inlet of the model. Analyzing the different variables of this uh, combined model. For example, respecting, uh, concerning the solid variables, we can observe that the maximum appears, well, each curve corresponds to each different model, geometrical model. Uh, the shape of the curves, I am representing here the maximal principal stress versus the time. So we can observe that the maximum appears always in the same, at the same time, and this time corresponds to the maximum pressure. And the shape is very similar to the shape of the pressure wave. So there is a direct correspondence between the pressure and the uh, maximal principal stress. Well, even if we compare this uh, fluid structure interaction analysis with a pure solid model, we can observe that in the central section, the results are more or less the same, are very, very similar. What happened in this case is that the presence of a plague, fibrotic part of the plate, what, ha uh, what happened is that this section is very, very stiff. So the inclusion of the internal pressure do not modify, or don't modify the, uh, the geometry of this part. So the, the displacement are negligible, so the results are the same. In this case, it could be better to apply only solid model, not fluid structure interaction. Analyzing the fluid variables, we can observe a typical, um, a typical case that corresponds to the high stenosis and acceleration, and here are some zones of disturbance of the flow. If we observe the wall shear stress, we can see here a higher wall shear stress in the stenosis zone and a lower wall shear stress in this part here. The lower wall shear stress affect or can affect to the plaque growth. And the wall shear stress, in this case here, for higher stenosis, we have higher wall shear stress, higher than 40 pascals. So this uh, high wall shear stress can affect to the final possible rupture of the, of the plaque, or to the remodeling of the endothelial cells in this part here. 
Okay, we can observe here again the recirculation and very, uh, very low wall shear strength zones here. So, and next conclusion, if we try to combine the fluid analysis with the solid analysis in the same simulation, what happened for this model is that finally the solid uh, results are similar to the solid analysis. So, it is necessary, it is necessary to apply a combined analysis for this case. And for the case of the fluid analysis, it's more or less the same. It could be necessary to apply a pure fluid analysis. So in this case here, for this plaque and to study the vulnerability of the plaque with separate analysis, solid or fluid analysis would be better and cheaper from a computational point of view. Um, how to apply this to, for example, fashion-specific geometries? How it is possible to apply this model to uh, to the fashion-specific analysis or to realistic geometry? Well, the response is the answer is yes. What happened is that the computational cost is very high. So this is this is a first step in which we analyze not the whole model, the whole model studying the uh, plaque growth, but only the modification on the permeability on the endothelium. I mean, the, uh, we try to analyze how the hemodynamical and solid variables affect the endothelial cells morphology due to these factors. So we took, it, uh, we took in this case a coronary bifurcation. We applied apply the impedance method in order to extract velocity and pressure waveforms. waveforms. We can observe here the uh, streamlines and we can observe that the solid is modified. So in this case, the fluid structure interaction analysis has a higher influence than in the previous case. And we can observe here different zones. We can observe here two different type of zone. For example, uh, marked with two, with number two, we observe this zone here that correspond to higher wall shear stress. It corresponds to laminar flow, higher wall shear stress, and the wall shear stress is always in the same direction. There is no changes in the direction of the wall shear stress. Well, these zones are known as atheroprotective places, and the endothelial cells, the morphology of the cell is more or less aligned with the direction of the flow. On the contrary, there are another zones mark uh, the node with one, this part here and this part here, when the sun recirculation, sun disturbance of the flow is presented. So in this case here, the wall shear stress is low, for example, in these zones here, and there is a change in the direction of the flow. So the oscillatory effect is higher. For example, this is the wall shear stress. And the morphology on the endothelial cells is more rounded, aleatory uh, dispersed. So the permeability of this uh, morphology and this morphology are very different. So can, how can we establish or modify or try to, to predict the morphology of these cells? Well. It is possible, for example, in this case I am presented, considering that the cells are formed by different fibrils. So we use, in this case, a um, orientation density function to predict which is the orientation of the individual fibrils in the cytoskeleton of the cell. So each fibril can reorient depending on the two main parameters, that is the average wall shear stress and also the oscillatory shear index. So it is possible to modify with these two parameters. We reorient the individual fiber. Uh, we have at the end the global shape of the endothelial cells. And we can measure the shape with this parameter here, that is the shape index. So for example, for shape index mm, close to one, we have a round shape of the cell. And close to zero, we have a very aligned endothelial cells. These are experimental data that analyze, study the influence on the wall shear stress level on the shape index. 
we can observe that for higher wall shear stress, the shape index is very low. It's the endothelial shear is aligned with the flow. Um, this case corresponds to this part here. So we can also include not only the wall shear stress, but the effect of the oscillatory shear index and to try to establish which is the final shape of the endothelial cells. And we can apply this model to the uh, to the patient-specific geometry. So we can analyze which is the oscillatory CR index, for example, in this realistic geometry, and also the wall stress, uh, the wall um, shear stress. So we can observe that the critical zones, in this case, are more or less the same. There is a controversy in which is the hemodynamical parameter that better reproduce the uh, growing of atheron plane. In this case, both parameters present similar results. We can apply this model of reorientation and finally obtain the global shape index in the different parts of the patient-specific geometry. We have this part here with these four that are atheroprom plates, places, and in this part here, here, or here, we have this shape of the uh, endocellular set that are known as atheroprotective shapes. So, well, I'm going to, I think it's more or less the hour. So I pass through this last uh, application that is uh, an interaction on how to apply machine learning techniques. But I pass through this and I go to the, to the final acknowledgement. Okay. So, well, these are the results, the, the main conclusion, but, well, I would like to thank to the people that had contributed to this work, and there are many persons that has participated, and I could like to thank to Miriam Cilla, Stefania Peña, Mauro Malve, Alberto Garcia, and Pablo Saed, and also to the financial support of this research, and thank you all of you for your kind attention. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Miguel Angel. So, questions? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for this very nice presentation. Uh, a simple question. Uh, in your own expert opinion, how about validation? I think... Um, if someone works in such uh, an area, what should, should, should he or she do to validate theoretical models or...? You, you are referring to the first model or to, or to the, 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 the models I presented at the end of the presentation? Uh, I'm referring uh, for the first model for the stenosis of the uh, arteries due to uh, macrophages or yeah. any other... Uh, it is very difficult to validate with experimental data, with experimental data, the, the global model. It is possible to validate individual parts of the model by using, for example, it is better to validate with in vitro models. So it is possible to use some part of the global model and validate with experimental model. It is very difficult to validate with the global model because there is a multifactorial model, so the influence of the different parameters is very complex to validate. So the final validation we have done is only from a um, qualitative point of view. So the shape of the plaque is similar to the plaque that uh, clinicians have found in, the, in, in, in his experience, in their experience, but only from a um, qualitative point of view. Or, okay, quantitative in the degree of stenosis is the validation. So the concentration, final concentration, for example, of macrophages or monocytes is taken from the literature. The problem is that in, in the literature, you had a very, very broad range of the different parameters. So it is easier to validate because surely your model is inside of the uh, lower and upper levels of this range. 
Uh, just, just as I the opportunity to intervene here, I think that this, this is indeed an extremely relevant question, but it's an, uh, an extremely relevant question in a specific optic of models. So as one of the speakers on Monday uh, recalls, so models can be used, uh, can have two different uh, applications. So one is uh, the prognosis or predictive application, and uh, another one would be uh, explorative application. So for, for the second application, then maybe here validation is not as critical as choosing the right parameters in order to generate virtually the right hypothesis uh, so as to suggest experiments that would have never been created otherwise. So I don't know, Miguel Angel, if uh, you can comment on this capacity uh, of the model. Um, one of the problem of the model is that we have a, a continued distribution of the different substances. So, um, correlating with uh, evidences, um, in, if you take a plaque, for example, in the, I go to the, to sign image of the plaque. Well, it's uh, this one here. Okay, let's go. This plaque here. We can observe that we have different zones. So it is difficult to validate this model because, well, if you observe the concentration of the different parts, probably the global concentration of our model correspond to the global concentration of this, uh, of this plaque. But it is not possible to detect the, 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 the different borders, the, the different boundary layers of the different constituents of the plaque what is one of the limitation of this model of continuum model. For example, if you use agents model, uh, there are a lot of uh, papers about agents models, but they are more applied to in stain restenosis, for example, than to atherome plaque. And you can separate the different parts of the plaque. So in this case, uh, these models are not able to, to, to predict this, this experimental evidence. Thanks for your, your talk. In the last part of your presentation, you were proposing an equation that relates the shape of the endothelial cells with the uh, OSI and Walsh stress. Yeah. How do you find out this? Uh, is the best fit curve of your data? How do you find out that equation? Okay. The, the equation of the shape index, or the, uh, sorry, I, I'm going to put the, the slides. Yeah, it's the equation of the shape of the endothelial cells. Yeah. This point here. Okay. No. And in the meantime, uh, which Walsh stress do you use to in that equation? Is the maximum, the average, time average uh, value? Uh, here in this equation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. In this case here. Yes. So what we did, uh, I went very, very quickly through the the formulation. What we have is a, a probability orientation density function of the individual fibrils. So what we did is to modify the uh, individual orientation of each fibril. So it, mm, its orientation uh, is modified mm, by two special parameters that are the wall shear stress, the time average wall shear stress, beta, this parameter here, and also the oscillatory shear index. And these parameters are included in this part here, and this is an exponential term that is the rotation of the individual fiber. So the rotation is affected by these two parameters. These parameters here is the wall shear stress and affect here, and this parameter is considered depending on the oscillatory shear index and affect here. So each individual fiber is, uh, is, uh, is modified, and we took data from the literature. There are many papers considering the orientation of individual fibers, 
And finally, it is possible to, to validate, this is possible to validate with experimental data, with in vitro experimental data, because you have the control on the wall shear stress, on, on the flow features of the experimental data. And you have, uh, by microscopy, you can also capture the shape of the endocellular cell, so it is possible to modify it. And also you can observe each individual cell, which are the main components of the cytoskeleton and how they are distributed in the in this space, so it is possible to validate. I'm going to the final question. Is, uh, before you said in the previous study, when you use uh, idealized geometries, that you can separate flow dynamic and then solid mechanics, yeah. not, not necessarily FSI. Yeah. In these patient-specific anatomies, that has an influence. Could you comment on, on well, the results that you found out using patient-specific data and how the effect of, of not using FSI could impact on the shape of the endothelial cells, for example? Yeah. For, for this case, for the endothelial cell remodeling model, we use only hemodynamical factors. We have this stress level, the solid stress level, but at this level, we didn't find uh, the, the, the influence of the solid stress on the cell, so we neglect, neglect it, and we consider only the hemodynamical factors. We have the information but the, about the solid stress, but uh, this is not incorporated in this model at this moment. A question there? Thanks, Miguel Angel, for the, for the presentation. Just, I would like to know your opinion about just one, one topic about the coronaries, okay? Yeah. That is the hypothesis of just consider rigid ball is, is correct. For example, in the, if you want to compute the pressure, just you, according to your experience, this doesn't affect the, the radial displacement and the longitudinal displacement of the, of, the, of the wall. That is correct, just to consider just only for fluid dynamics. Yeah. I, I think it's know. an an important limitation. It's an important simplification, mainly for the coronary arteries. For example, for another arteries, it could be okay. For example, for carotid or for femoral, but for the coronary, the, the coronary is moving, always moving, uh, because it is linked to the heart. Probably the, the the motion we are considered here is not so real because. What happened is that the coronary artery uh, has a lot of uh, chains in the direction and probably the, 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 the contraction would affect, is not the, a pure contraction in the actual direction, but they probably affect to the flexion, to the bending on some part of the coronary artery. So I think it, sh it is important to consider. What happened is it, it is much more complex. So because I think it's easier only a fluid analysis that no also including the, the, the motion of the of the fluid mesh. So I think there are some people working on that, but it's not very, very, very easy. But do you think that the it's important change in the pressure inside the, for example, if you want to compute the pressure drop between the stenosis, this mo this movement of the coronary in the just in, in the, the in the pressure. In the pressure. The pressure level. The pressure level. No, I, I think the, the, the effect of the pressure level can be included in a fluid analysis, pure fluid analysis. I think that the solid part is affected mainly by the heart motion, but not, but not by the pressure. Okay, thanks. No, I think indeed that this is so, and what you were saying, when you look at patients with coronary artery disease, they become very torturous. Yeah. So there's really some something going on. So I want to thank you again, and especially for mentioning machine learning, but very quickly skipping <laughs> over machine learning.